if you want to understand the basics of time intelligence functions and also how you can use it to calculate the year over year change inside a report please watch this video till the end hello and welcome to power pivot tutorial video number six or pp06 in this video we are going to look at the time intelligence functions in the previous video pp05 we discussed five topics first one was data model design and then we look at how to add measure and build a report and then we had discussion around three critical tips first one was how to hide columns from client tool second one was how to sort by a column and the final one was how to update a calendar in this video pp06 we are going to discuss four topics first one will be how to influence external filters using calculate function and then how to calculate the year on year change using the same period last year function and then how to avoid division by zero using the divide function and finally how to produce a report in a pivot table and use conditional formatting to highlight some insights inside the report in this video we are going to use the same example that we used in the previous video we are going to start from the finished file that we reached at the end of video pp05 you will find a link to video pp05 on top of the screen right now so you can go back and see how we reached this stage if you look at this power pivot window we have a data model containing five tables in the center of the star schema we have the all sales or our transaction table on the left hand side we have the product table containing the product id product name category and the price and also we have some information around the channel information also in a separate table regarding the region and a calendar table created inside the power pivot window and also we created a one-to-many relation between the all sales table and each and every lookup table inside these data models if you go to the data view you will see that inside the all sales table we created only two measures one to calculate the revenue using the sum x function and the other one with a simple sum function we created a total for the quantity if you go to the excel workbook itself we already created a pivot table report containing the list of months from jan to december and also we have the revenue divided by category and we have a slicer to select the year inside this model we have four years from 2016 up to 2019 my objective in this video is to find out the change in revenue between years 2018 and 2019 in order to do so i need to put both years inside the same pivot table so let me do some changes inside this pivot table i'm going to take out the categories and i'm going to focus only on the total revenue so i have here one column for the labels which is basically uh, the month the name of the month and then i have one column for the revenue and i can change the filtration using my slicer as you can see 2016 17 18 19. if you think about how the dex measures works it is impacted by the external filter and what is external filter external filter is basically the filters coming from the pivot tables and the slicers think about this measure we have only one measure calculating the revenue if you go back to the power pivot window you will see that i have 27 mil million of revenues for the four years when i put it inside the pivot table report it is using the external filter which is basically coming from the rows and the columns of this pivot table so in this case i'll see that the revenue for 2019 is only 6.8 million dollars because i already have a filter coming from the slicer if i remove the filter i'll find the 27 million the total of everything if i use the filter again it is filtered down to 6.8 and same for each and every row so in order to see the previous year while selecting 2019 meaning that i want to look at 2018 when i'm selecting the 2019 i need to influence the external filter in order to do so i'm going to use a very useful dex function called calculate 
the calculate function is very important function that you may use again and again in many different exercises but it's very useful when you are trying to use any of the time intelligence functions let's go back to the power pivot window and try to write some code in order to show inside this table the pivot table we are going to show two columns first one will be the 2019 and in the same table in the same view while selecting 2019 i want to show also the 2018 numbers in a separate column so i'm going back to the power pivot window give a name for a new measure and let's call it revenue 2018 colon and equal and let's start to write the calculate function cal our first selection will be calculate if you look at the screen tip the first requirement will be an expression and expression can be a calculation or a measure that i already calculated before so because i'm going to focus on the revenue i'm going to use the revenue measure that i already calculated inside this model in order to select any of the calculated measures that i have already i'm going to use the open bracket the open square bracket and here is the list of the measures that i have i need to use the revenue so i'm going to hit the tab key and then comma in order to put the second argument the second argument will be basically a filter so it is very obvious that calculate will influence the external filter so it requires a calculation and then a filter so it's going to evaluate this measure against a filter that i'm going to give for this function so let's think about the filter i need the revenue for 2018 despite my selection from the slicer or from the external filter i'm going to call the column of the year from the calendar table so i'm going to start to write calendar in order to use a column from the calendar table and this column will be basically the year so i'm going to select the calendar and between two square brackets i need the year column and then i'm going to use the equal operator and i'm going to compare with 2018 so this is telling dax whenever you see this measure compare the calendar column of the year with the value of 2018 if the if it's equal please calculate the revenue let's close the bracket for calculate and hit enter some quick number formatting let's go back to our pivot table if you look at the all sales table i have a new measure called revenue 2018 i'm going to drop it inside the value section and you can see here i have the revenue for 2018 in order to validate this output i'm going to select the 2018 and look at the two measures now you will see that they are identical total identical in each and every month is identical so what happened here i ordered the dex to influence the external filter coming from the from the pivot table and only select the year 2018 regardless of my selection coming from this slicer so if you select 2016 still you have 2018 here if you select 2017 still you have 2018 if you even remove the filter at all you still have the 2018 so i think so far it is useful you can use calculate the same way that i showed you however we have a problem now if i want to calculate the change from 2019 to 2018 no problem however if i want to calculate also 2018 in this case i'm going to calculate another measure for 2017 and so on and so forth and i think this is not very helpful so i need something different to help me to look at the previous year regardless of the selection that i have from the slicer So in order to look at the previous year, regardless of my selection from the slicer itself, I need to use another function. And this function will work also inside the calculate function. This function is very simple and the name is very informative. It's called same period last year. So let's go back to our Excel Power Pivot window and see how we can change our code in order to cater for this function inside the same measure i'm going to edit revenue 2018 will not be useful anymore so i'm going to change it to revenue last year or ly and inside the calculate function itself i'm going to carefully delete my filter the second argument and i'm going to start to write my new function which is basically same period last year so i'm going to write same and your first choice will be same period last year hit the tab key and then open a bracket in order to start to write the requirements so it requires only dates because this function will look at the external filter coming from the calendar table and go back one year one calendar year so it requires always dates 
and the dates should come from the calendar table itself and if you're not using a calendar table inside your data model this function will never work properly it requires all the time continuous and unique dates and this will never happen but only inside a calendar table so let's try to write calendar and here you go you have all the choices from calendar table for sure i'm going to use the date column because it is the column that contains the continuous dates and also unique dates let me close the bracket for same period last year and hit enter and let's go back to our pivot table and here you go you have that the name changed to revenue last year and whenever you select 2019 look at here you have here 2019 in the revenue column and revenue last year contains the previous year same for 2018 and so on and so forth if you want to make sure it is working properly let's go back to our pivot table fields i'm going to the more fields inside the calendar table and i'm going to select the years and i'm going to put it above the month inside the rows section and i'm going to remove the filter and here you go you have here all the years let's check 2017 for sure 2016 there is no previous year i'm starting from 2016 if you check january for 2017 obviously you have 574 previous year and this is exactly the same amount that i have for jan 2016 if you check any month it will be always the same let's again select 2019 and remove the years from uh, the pivot table and now i need to start to calculate the year over year change i'm going to calculate it on two steps first step i'm going to calculate the change the absolute change from this year to previous year let's go back to power pivot window a new measure i'm going to call it variance versus last year colon and equal and i'm going to subtract the total revenue for last year from the total revenue of this year i'm going to open a square bracket i'm going to start with the revenue of the current year and then subtract operator and then open another square bracket and revenue last year and hit enter quick number formatting let's go back to our pivot table i have the new measure here just click it in order to see it inside the pivot table and i think it's working very perfectly i have here the revenue for the current year revenue for the last year and then the variance whenever you change the filter or the slicer selection it is working perfectly let's add the final step which is basically dividing the variance versus last year by the revenue of the previous year another measure let me call it year on year percent colon and equal open square bracket in order to see the list of the measures i'm going to use the variance versus last year and then divide operator open square bracket again and then revenue last year and then hit enter number formatting this time will be the percent only one decimal place let's go back to our pivot table i have the new measure here just one click and here you go you have the year on year change for each and every one i think it's working perfectly let's try our slicers 2018 very good 2017 very very good and finally 2016 oops i have a problem here i have an error because i divided the variance over the revenue of the last year which is basically zero or null that's why i need to do a tweak to my code in order to avoid such an error let's see how we can do this together to avoid division by zero i'm going to use another function another dex function called divide so i'm going to replace the divide operator that i used inside the year over year change measure by a new function called divide so let's go back to the power pivot window inside the same measure i'm going to start my measure by the function divide div my first choice and then tab and i'm going to replace the divide operator by a comma if you look at the screen tip the first argument will be the numerator and the second argument will be the denominator and i have a third argument which is basically the alternate result so if the result will be an error i'm going to put my alternate result here and this will be basically a blank so i need to see a blank if i have an error resulted from division by zero and in order to give the blank i can use a function called blank with only open and close parentheses with no any required arguments and then close the bracket for divide and then hit enter 
let's go back to our pivot table you will see that the results for 2016 year change is disappeared uh, replaced by a blank if you check 2019 still working properly 18 17 and in 2016 it is disappeared and this is exactly what i need now we need to build some useful report based on the year varied rate change that we just calculated so i'm going to the insert ribbon and from insert ribbon i'm going to pivot table and i'm going to select from data model existing worksheet let me select a18 and then click on ok and i have here a new pivot table let me give it a name i'm going to call it revenue by category and hit enter and let's start to build a simple report from all sales i have all the measures i'm going to select the revenue and also the year over year change and i'm going to the product table and i'm going to select the category and here you go you have a very simple report a small tweak or a small setting that i need to do i need both pivot tables to stop updating the column width with each and every update so i'm going to select the first one going to pivot table analyze options uncheck auto fit column with an, an update and i'm going to do the same for the second one options and also uncheck auto fit column width on updates and i'm ready now this table is looking at the entire report without any relation with the slicer as you can see so if i change here it's only changing in the above table no change at all in the new report i need the slicer to impact also the new report so i'm going to select the slicer and from the slicer ribbon i'm going to report connection i'm going to select also revenue by category and click on ok now both reports impacted by the selection of my slice so i need something visually highlight the increase or decrease in revenue year over year so i'm going to use the conditional formatting from the home ribbon going to conditional formatting and i'm going to select icon sets and i'm going to select the three icon sets and click on ok it's now only in the first cell of my year over year column i need to expand it so i'm going to use this icon and i'm going to select the third a selection which is all sales showing you very percent value for category here you go you have the icon sets highlighting the upsides and downsides of your year of year change however there is a small problem here this is a relative coloring and selection of the icon you can see that i have some negatives here but still in yellow i have this one negative it's in red and this one positive in green which is not bad but if you change the selection to 2018 you still have some positive here and here uh, the 0.3 and the 1.2 in red and pointing down and this is not exactly what i want for the entire table i need the icons itself to look at a value uh, a threshold that i put myself and based on it it decide the icon if it's red or yellow or green so in my case i need anything above one percent of growth to be in green anything below negative one percent to be in red and anything in between to be in yellow so i need to edit the rule of the conditional formatting i'm going to select the entire column this time going back to conditional formatting and this time i'm going to select manage rule and from manage rule i have here my rule i can just edit now i need to change the type instead of being a percent to be a number if i select a number this will help me to put my own threshold again i'm going to change this one to number and let's try to edit here and see how we can tell the conditional formatting please put anything above one percent in green so you have here the icon the green icon when value is greater than or equal i can change from here but greater than or equal is good for me anything greater than or equal to what one percent to type one percent i can just put 0 0.01 here is the one percent so this will be in green and then the second rule the icon is yellow when is less than one percent and greater than or equal to let's put negative 0.01 this is exactly the negative one percent so in this case this will be uh, in yellow as you can see and anything below the one percent will be in red and pointing down i can just click on ok and then apply and close and here you go I have here 0.3 percent less than one percent but greater than negative one percent it is in yellow and the rest is above one percent and that's why all in green if you change to 2019 you will see the rule is working perfectly less than one percent but still positive it's in yellow negative but higher than negative one percent 
it is still in yellow but the one that is below negative one percent it is in red so the conditional formatting is working perfectly i can copy the same table control c and control v and then i can change let's say uh, instead of looking at the category i'm going to take the category out and instead i'm going to put something like the channels so i have also all the channels and by the way whenever you copy a pivot table it is taking the same properties so it is working good with the slicer but you need to redo your conditional formatting and here you go you have the same conditional formatting as the previous table i think now you have a very good report you have your slicer all linked together you can change your selection you can see quickly where is the positive change and the negative change from year over year based on your report the percentage that you calculated and also the conditional formatting that was all for today very important video we looked at how we can influence the external filter using calculate we see how to calculate the year over year change using same period last year and also how to avoid division by zero using the divide function and finally how we can use conditional formatting and the measures that we created together in order to have a very insightful report about the change of revenue year on year if you like this video please like it Leave me a comment and subscribe and thank you very much for your time and see you in next video and bye.